Good morning, everyone. Uh, let me first introduce myself. Uh, I'm Sanjay Majumdar from IIT Kharagpur. Uh, so let me uh, start by thanking organizers uh, to give such a opportunity and having such a nice meeting. So the talk of my presentation is a quantum instability at the drive uh, Bose instant condensate. I thought uh, this is one of the area which is not be discussed by others. So I brought it here. So before uh, going to the talk, I would like to uh, uh, share the, what are the activities we are having it at IIT Kharagpur in our group. Okay, so there are a lot of areas we are working on it. Okay, mostly that funded by different uh, groups. Okay, many of them are uh, prime minister research fellows. And you see that some of them are from the funded from outside. Okay, some of them with the, you know, IIT has the uh, MAU for uh, dual degrees that PhD students can get degree from Indian Institute. Also it from the abroad, like this is the topple, this is the project where Anirban is in the University of Melbourne. Okay. And this is the uh, project which we have taken with uh, the funding from the TCS and Fujitsu from Japan. And uh, uh, recently uh, we are working on super solid and droplet. So hopefully we'll be getting a paper within a few days on uh, physical review research on this. And the, in this area where I would like to talk today, that is uh, the instability and quantum super fluid. So this is the area where uh, uh, here, already one poster is there. Uh, Shubhdot is presenting one poster and he is the CompuCut guy kind of things. He wrote the programs from the scratch uh, in the C++ platform and he is a master in computation algorithms and programming. So he will be submitting soon and I am presenting one of his work. Okay. And there are a few more actually there. Uh, there. So with that, let me start today's presentation. So I'll go a little bit from the scratch so that uh, maybe it will be repeating or a little boring for the experienced people, but I think it will be enjoyable. So let me go by what I am talking about driven system. Okay. So some people also say there's a parametric oscillations. Okay. So let us see why these nomenclatures are coming. Consider start with the uh, kind of system like here. Okay. So if you have a spring mass systems, think about the springs, okay, one mass is hanging through the spring attached and it is oscillating through the, uh, the gravity. So if you can make little push force uh, so that it will be beyond the equilibrium on the gravitational or uh, impedance of the gravity, okay, and give little bit oscillation with the, in a horizontal direction, like if you leave it with a, some angle, then what you see that, that let me go back and uh, see it. Okay. What you see that after some time, okay, that oscillation of pendulum in the horizontal direction is coming off. And what it happens, okay, there is a two, two different kind of oscillations are going together. So what is happening sometimes you see that vigorous oscillation or pendulumic oscillation comes in the horizontal directions. Okay. So here, and it comes sometimes so uh, erratic kind of things, it is violent kind of things comes or oscillations, okay. So, what okay, fine. So uh, here we can think of it like that. So the center of gravity, which is oscillating, okay. Or you can say that in the normal uh, pendulum equation, which you just talked about, okay, there the gravity is now oscillating. Okay, so over a time period. Okay, and so that's why it's called parametric oscillations. So here you will have a, uh, you can write that uh, equation of motions in the particular direction. You will have a both directions equation of motion, but if you talk about that along the horizontal directions, okay, or transverse directions, so you can use your kinetic energy and potential energy and got all our Lagrangian equations. The normal equation of motion, what you see that if you have an angle theta, Okay, so the theta double dot will have a damping part and gravitational part. But here you will get extra terms. 
that is your coronal storms. The coronal storms actually give this kind of a parametric oscillations. Okay, so if I just uh, show it, uh, let me see. So you, uh, sorry, you can see it from here. You started with a small oscillation in initially, okay, which will become a violent, okay, after some time. So it will be very, very high amplitude oscillation in the horizon directions. So this kind of oscillations, okay, so whether it's stable or unstable, okay, so that will be very, very uh, challenging questions, okay. So the stability analysis can be done if you want to just see it, uh, just whether the system is stable or not. So we have to look at this, how the disturbance is going over time, whether it's uh, decaying or is going, keep on going, growing uh, over time. So if it is keep on growing over time, you will say it's unstable. Uh, if it is die downs, okay, after some time, or if it is periodic, okay, you will say that it's more or less stable. The numerous day to day life example, you can see it. Okay, so uh, in the case of the fluid, normal fluid, or in optics, people know this. Okay, so you know that uh, you get the surface pattern, different kind of surface pattern, or in the case of optics, you get the wave from patterns. Okay. So what would happen, depending upon this forcing frequency, okay, you will get different patterns that you see that the quarter pole, then uh, the triangular, okay, then a square kind of things, okay. The different polynomial uh, kind of, uh, polygonal kind of uh, structure, you will see it. So there are very good articles uh, on this. If you are interested, you can look at it, that PRE paper. And there is a very good uh, review article on this those who are interested can look at it. So let us uh, look at it once again, the equations, okay, uh, that uh, which we uh, talked about the parametric oscillation, what the resonance means here, okay. So let's take a simple example of 1D picture. So we have normal equations, okay, that uh, uh, differential equations, which actually now here GT is no more that the gravitational part, it has a, now two, uh, one part is uh, uh, added on it. What you have it is an amplitude, okay? And it is a periodic uh, uh, term, which is oscillating, okay? So, uh, so sinusoidal part is coming up. So that's the parametric force. Now with proper choice of this parameter, what you could write this equation, many of you can identify this equation very easily, that this is the math equation, which you can write it. Okay, so we'll have uh, the uh, different uh, natural frequencies, and H is the amplitude of the amplitude of the driving force or driving uh, amplitude. You can say that. Okay, so now what we are looking at that uh, we are looking at the oscillation in x directions. So depending on this one, the question may be asked. Okay, we have this parametric oscillation or driving system. So what frequency will be very interesting to us? Then what you can see, standard mechanics books like land analysis, if you just look at that, what do you see that if you have a driving frequency capital omega, which is sitting here, if we can write it twice omega naught by n, this n can be one or two or something. Like if you can put that n equal to one, okay, it will be twice omega naught, two, it will be omega naught. Okay, so there are interesting phenomena appears. Like the example, if I have that simple example that omega is twice omega naught plus epsilon, little away from that twice omega naught, okay, where this is very tiny factor, okay, what would happen, you can guess that the trial solution will be like that, where we have that cosine and sine part, which will be orthogonal, and people can get the squeeze state out of that, that you all know, okay, and these coefficients are time dependent. Now these coefficients can tell many things about the trajectory or the dynamics of the system. Like uh, if I say that, that in the linear region of epsilon, what we can show that easily that this uh, coefficient a and b can go with the it will have mu t. Now you can understand easily from this expression or b goes it will have mu t. If mu is imaginary, you understand that is oscillating, okay, easily. But if mu is greater than zero, 
then then you will get uh, keep on energy pump to the system okay so energy will pump to the system your a and b keep on increasing so the real system will be unstable okay so that this mu is nothing but that h omega naught this h is the amplitude the part driving amplitude and omega naught is the natural frequency and the small uh, perturbation in the epsilon which you gave in the <coughs> driving frequency so this is also driving frequency part and what you see that this uh, unstable region or instability arises when epsilon is in this range so that in this range what you get that region is okay and if you want to plot it uh, in terms of the uh, this driving amplitude versus the driving oscillations okay what you see you will get a distinct region okay which starts from the h equal to 0 and epsilon equal to 0 distinct region of unstable uh, phenomena okay and beyond that is stable now if you include that uh, uh, damping part which is that goes by uh, velocity term okay so now what you will have you will have a gamma so extra term so, so you can find out the solution easily mu minus gamma is coming and then oscillating part so that instability uh, the region will be little modified and what you will see that you will see that this kind of a uh, uh, region where that it is onset uh, it will be like critical onset of the amplitude that h okay that h and from that you will get the unstable region so over this region will be unstable and this is the region which will be stable so mostly what we uh, uh, see that that you will get that the strong uh, instability okay that in exact regions when omega becomes twice omega naught and this one okay since it is twice omega naught in terms of period if you just see it, that t excited uh, the period of excitation will be half of the natural period okay that's how you call some harmonic if you would have n equal to 2 you will get this is the same and you will get okay harmonic one okay so you will get all integers where it, uh, integers can be even or odd depending upon that you will get the harmonic and subharmonic uh, excitations okay so if there is details uh, you can find a very good uh, article in this one which i would like uh, i'll advise all the you just scholar to go through because this is a very simple things having this kind of background what we can do that there is one more way to understand this uh, instability using the some kind something called froke theory and this is very popular in optics also okay so uh, fluid dynamics definitely it is popular so instead of going details in the mathematics let me make it in a very lucid way so you can have this kind of some kind of point kind of map let me uh, put it here so you can think about this is some kind of periodic oscillations going on the trajectory is going on instead of looking at each point on that this is uh, evolution of the trajectory okay what you can just think about a point kind of section one cross section through which the trajectory goes through and mark the defined points at each period so let's say that uh, i can have a, this one at a particular period i can have xn and then map it to the vk point kind of map to xn plus 1 okay and uh, this is after time period t okay question will be that that where that that xn plus 1 goes to xn if that is so okay then we will say that it is a stable periodic trajectory if these differences keep on increasing like xn plus 1 minus xn that means this is not converging then we can say that are stable advantage is that in this approach okay what you can write that the, the solutions we can write some periodic function times it is a mu t so that the eigenvalues of this so in this periodic function you can have write in terms of fourier basis so ultimately the total hamiltonian what you got you can write in terms of fourier basics diagonalize it and the eigenvalue which you will give this this it is a omega t from that you will be able to say that that whether the system is stable or not okay so you can have the stability analysis from this so that is another way we can do it and people do it 
Okay. So today's uh, presentation, I would just uh, present one of the beautiful phenomena of this periodic oscillation, which is paired instability, and that in Bose Einstein condensate. So this is the paper which came uh, first, okay, uh, and it was uh, submitted PRL. PRL accepted it, but not saying that it's not that broad enough. So they asked us to publish physical level research or physical way. That time physical research doesn't have any impact factor. So we published in PRA. Anyhow, so subsequently from this work, what would happen that uh, there was an experiment going on in the Korea that test, okay. And uh, seeing our result, they contacted us and then uh, saw that similar result they also found out, okay. And then we did extra theory for them. And this is a work, this is work of this Dilip Maithu, who is in Kaust now, who submitted last year, and Koshik, who also submitted last year. This is who is a, a part of these collaborations. Shubhrata is also a pillar of these collaborations. Okay. So this is the work which I'm going to present today in subsequent uh, slides. So let's start from the little uh, introduction of this study instability. So you may know that in the, around 1980, 1831, Faraday proposed this one, okay, the, in the particle oscillation, okay. So it is that when the vibration frequency exceeds some critical value, what would happen that hydrostatic surface become unstable. And what would happen, you will get different unstable features, uh, uh, instability features, okay, subharmonic harmonics. So what you see that, the suppose you have fluid here, okay. So this feature you yeah, you see, and what you have, you can, may have seen that water, some small amount of water if you put on the lips, okay. And then what you do that it will be like a droplet form because of the surface tension. Now you vibrate that lip. So it is that kind of vibration from the down we are uh, placing to the platform, okay. And so that means that whatever gravitational acceleration was there, that is now modified periodically, okay? So if you do this kind of uh, experiment, this experiment has been done in uh, Idekarapur, Dilip has done that experiment also. So, and uh, then you can either seeing the photographic plate, how this pattern comes, okay? So all the subharmonic, harmonic patterns and analysis through the, the calculations. So both through the uh, Matthews equation using numerical solutions and flow theory. So here you remember that gravitational acceleration is modified as I discussed earlier. No, you have to, sometimes that is that you have to get it. So once you start that, keep on that vibration, increase this oscillation, okay, vibration of that omega is there here from in this plate we are getting. So you will keep on increasing, suddenly you see the features, okay. So that it will be changing, okay. So one, when it comes to that twice omega naught, when it comes to omega naught, when it comes to phi by two omega naught, so you'll get all those things. So from the classical theory, you can understand easily using this uh, Navier-Stokes theorems, okay, whether it's the viscous or inviscous, okay, you just uh, solve it. So here you see the right-hand side, you remember that you have pressure terms, you have viscosity terms, and this is the extra additional terms you give it. Okay, so that is your, the parametric force, okay, GT. So that is this one. And you are also have the continuity equations, okay, from the mass conservation. So what we actually do it here, so this is the, some cylindrical uh, shape of the water uh, body we have considered, okay. So experimentally, it was half cylinder considered, okay. Theoretically, it was done again, okay. So what we've done, then the, this radius, whatever, that we just, took that some deformation in the axial and azimuthal directions. And also radial part is there, eta, okay. So the radial part is dependent on both axials and azimuthals. And this is a, uh, published uh, in the uh, theoretical computational fluid, fluid dynamics paper, okay. Now, if you do that considerations, what you'll get after some uh, modification, some derivation, not modification, derivations, you could reduce it, similar kind of equation which you saw in Matthew equation in spring mass system, okay, where this eta is nothing but 
the modified or effective you can uh, that uh, deformations which actually depends on the surface tension of the water body okay and axial axial and azimuthal wave numbers so you see that we just uh, say make a separation that uh, these terms that axial and azimuthal terms the quantum number uh, that k and m so then we did uh, the flow plane analysis okay and try to see that stability okay so what is seen that so in the generally in a water droplet you will see this kind of different patterns comes so you will have a star shaped sometimes square shaped triangular shapes so these are actually identified with the different modes of azimuthal and axial uh, quantum number or uh, uh, some numbers okay distinct numbers for the classical is no quantum number okay so what we see that here also if you just plot versus that this is kr is your axial quantum number uh, sorry axial uh, wave number not quantum number wave number versus that this is the amplitude of the driving driving force okay so if you plot it just like the spring mass system here also you see that some stable regions okay and there is tang shape comes up as you have seen that unstable region in the spring mass system so what you will see that you will see that the subharmonic that is twice omega naught so when capital omega will twice omega naught harmonic that is when omega naught like the tang shape this you will see for different modes with different structures what you can say as the azimuthal terms okay so and so this is the picture you see and now we would like to see that since it is uh, since it is seen in the classical fluid whether quantum fluid it can be seen or not so as you know this is uh, known to the audience here very well that we can have the some 10 to the power uh, 3 to 10 to the power 5 numbers of atom we can condense it uh, in a laser cooled system where you can have the magnetic field around this okay which is uh, also known as atom laser because of its coherence okay so what we can have we can write this hamiltonian of the system okay where you can write that this is a kinetic energy part this is trap part and in the last uh, yesterday there was talks where the we have uh, he has discussed about the contact interactions between the atoms okay so that already you know and this contact interaction depends on the the scattering length between the atoms this scattering length okay is very important quantity here and this can be moduled okay so the, if you if you can uh, understand that how the scattering length comes so you can have that phase vector resonance okay which can be uh, oscillating okay using the external electric field or external magnetic field in the experiment of which we have done okay in uh, uh, korea there we have oscillating magnetic field around this okay and also it can be done in optically and here lithium atom was chosen and the trap was a pancake shaped it was made with the red detuned optical trap uh, axially confinement and magnetic trap so this one when we have this uh, oscillating magnetic field around this what we could see that that using the phase vector resonance which i think many of you i don't know whether you know it that this is nothing but the using external field what is done actually that interaction among the atoms were uh, were modified sometime it goes to the atomic part sometime it goes to the energy part so there is a oscillation between these two in the layman languages so you can control that and that controlling mechanisms okay what you see it over time we can plot it with respect to the scattering length which is in terms of the bore radius is written and that oscillation can be controlled in the laboratory so and it has done so once we did it then what we could see that 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 modulation part we can put it in the in the expressions of the the hamiltonian okay in the uh, uh, where we have put in that contact interactions so the r a scattering part can be modified now okay we have g uh, d, uh, g2d is same like a u here okay we apart from the scattering terms okay and this is the your periodic oscillating terms sinusoidal terms 
and uh, this is uh, normalized with the a scattering and this is your amplitude of the driving force so if you do that what would happen that uh, you can show that uh, using this one uh, we have chosen that that is our the state of the atoms and this is a 2d shaped is made of this kind of a um, frequency of the trap okay and what you see that after one second of modulation we could see that different forms in the experiment and this has been beamed over three degree um, intervals okay and this has been also theoretically produced okay theoretically explained and we have identified uh, all the uh, all the uh, modes okay i not uh, i don't have much time so i'll just uh, go for a little faster so like that we also will see it here defined unstable and stable regions of different modes you will see that so what from here what we get we get the precise measurement of the dispersion relations of the collective excitations we could identify the resonance frequency okay of um, the different patterns okay comparing with the experiment and theory and uh, using the flow k analysis okay now i just want to come to that uh, the another paper the physical review a paper where actually we talked about that uh, from where this uh, this work started okay where you have taken that binary beams and it has some interesting phenomena that that we could choose different composition but here we have chosen two different isotopes of the rubidium as an example and we make this is immiscible and this is one of the characteristic of immiscibility so because of the heaviness what you can have that you could see that that uh, the two components of the bose einstein condensate are almost separated so this is one component as another component okay so what you, you see that we will write that mean field equations okay for both the components where the we have the inter and inter uh, coupling between the atoms also taken care of okay now what we would just seen here that if we modulate one of the components scattering length like red one okay uh, which is b component what kind of effect we get okay so that is experimentally feasible and uh, that has been seen shown also so we have taken experimental parameters here okay and uh, then using this uh, 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 the matthews equation we could make the matthews equation kind of thing so th that what we could see that we could see that uh, we could see that that for uh, uh, dynamics from one component to another we could see that and over time what you will see that different features will come i'll just go in first because i don't have much time it takes some time uh, to get some feature you see that different forms comes so this is m equal to 4 okay so next one just i'll go a little first so you will get all the features okay all the modes depending upon your driving frequencies okay driving amplitude okay you will get over time different modes will come okay so okay i think uh, there are many modes you can see it okay if you are interested i can show it later uh, so let me show you that this one so we saw that different subharmonic excited uh, patterns okay so what is so interesting it so once you have this one what we could do in along with this uh, solving the math equation numerically we can do that flow analysis and in the flow analysis we have just checked that instead of taking the modulation in the scattering if you do that modulation in the trap frequency okay that oscillation frequency it will almost give the similar effect and that is easy way to understand so then again did it some similar kind of calculations okay and uh, these are flow analysis which i don't have time to discuss okay so if you are interested i can show it later so what is here that because of the two components okay we uh, i remember, so what would happen that we have to get that pressure imbalance between these two component and this pressure imbalance depends on the surface tension of the um, and the interfacial region so what will happen that if you put by hand different surface tension value 
and do the flow plane analysis and compare the numerical calculation from the new uh, flow uh, from the Matthew equation. What we see it that particular value of uh, sigma, particular value of surface tension between the two components. Okay, what we could see that we could see the tongue region, which is unstable region. And in that we could, we could see that for flow plane analysis that for particular value of sigma and this B factor is you remember the eigenvalue in the uh, flow plane region that we could match it. So putting that particular value of sigma, we could find it. So that means that and this sigma is true for all of the pattern. Okay, so that's important point. So that means from the both the analysis from the numerical analysis and flow K, which is kind of analytic analysis, we could find the surface tension of the uh, in, in at the interfacial region. And that is one of the beauty of this total result. Okay. So it is very much used in the drug analysis. Okay. And it is now coming to be uh, the one of the criteria to characterize okay, uh, the BEC. Okay. Apart from the defined structure, which you see in an instability region, also, that will also characterize the different properties of the BECs. Okay. So with that, I have to conclude. So the, I, we have observed the spontaneous form of the star-shaped uh, surface pattern okay, in BECs, a single component as experimental part. Patterns are controlled externally by changing the amplitude and frequencies, driving field. So what we saw the parametrically excited modulating scattering length near the face resonance we have done. So parametric oscillation simulation mean field levels is a numerical solution, okay, which is taken care of. So uh, that this is the interpretation which we got, okay, by knowing the uh, oscillating pattern, we could characterize different properties of the VEC. And finally, that from the experimental observation, the excited subharmonic uh, star shape pattern, okay, is identified with the flow analysis. Okay, and this actually gives us the precise measurement of dispersion relation for each collective excitations. Identify the resonance frequencies of the pattern, which is compared with the experimental theory. And this uh, for the flow analysis and for the binary BC, okay, which uh, is one of the future plan with this uh, experimental group. Okay, there also will get this uh, surface tension. So this is the work uh, of these three persons. Okay, uh, they have submitted, uh, they have got a degree last year and he is going to submit within a few months. Uh, so uh, others authors in this, uh, this is the experimental group. We have a collaboration with the Hamburg group and University of Massachusetts. So, and this, some of the part of this work is supported by DAG. Thank you for your kind attentions.